what are you most excited about with Mindbloom in particular in this next phase? You mentioned building out the team and just like scaling the operations. There's been tons of great results already so far. I imagine that's probably one of the most rewarding parts uh, of even building this company. What are you looking forward to? So you answered the obvious answer there, which is the, the yep. client stories are like, it's like a huge cultural pillar of Mindbloom. It's something we share internally and externally is just laser focus on like the work that's being done for the clients that these incredible trailblazing clinicians that we partner with and coaches are like helping people to access. It's, there are a lot of tears shed <laughs> when we share them internally and externally. But the thing I'm, I'm most excited about, or maybe one of the things I'm most excited about is with Mindbloom, you know, not only do we have this like really awesome mission and not only do I get to feel like I'm in my Ica guy where I'm building something that like is at the cross section of what I'm really good at and what the world needs and what I love doing and what also can make money. But I also set out to really try to build an organization where we weren't just trying to innovate with the company, but we're also really trying to innovate with the company culture that we're building. And so one of the things we're doing is building uh, a more conscious company culture or what we call a, a culture of consciousness. And especially now as we're really scaling from, I think we have about 25 now to probably 200 people as of the date of this recording in early November, 2020, how we're like really putting in place this like really special culture of consciousness. Um, and it's really challenging and it's really painful, but it's a way for us to not only uh, make this big contribution that feels like our, we're putting like our art and our soul like into what we're building to help people. Mm -hmm. But it feels like just the act of building the company with this unique company culture is its own like avenue for like personal and for lack of a better word, like spiritual or like philosophical growth, both as individuals and as like a team. And so that's one of the things I'm, I'm most excited about. And it's something that uh, we're like investing a lot more in now that we're really growing and scaling the team. So I'm, I'm really curious about that. Can you give it a, a couple of specifics of what goes into building that culture in that specific way? Yeah. So there are a few values that we're really implementing. So one is a culture of fairly radical uh, transparency and uh, candor and intellectual honesty. So for instance, like we don't do one-on-ones at the company, everything we do as a team and we're constantly giving each other like both positive and constructive feedback across the team. Another is that we talk a lot and think a lot about how not just to help our clients separate from their egos, but how do we like separate ourselves from our egos while we're working and while we are having intellectually honest discussions with each other and how do we like give ourselves up to like the higher mission to transform lives in the world. Another is that we have a, a culture of pretty radical freedom and responsibility. We were like a remote first company before it was cool. COVID really took the wind <laughs> out of our like radical remote first sales. <laughs> but from founding, we've been remote first because we believe that one, we wanted to attract people from all over the country who are, you know, incredibly fired up and passionate about this and didn't want to limit where we're hiring from, but two, wanted to create a culture where people were able to go into really deep work on their own, have a lot of freedom and responsibility to make their own decisions and not have a lot of oversight. That's something that I think we're, we're seeing a lot of pretty innovative company cultures, even if they're controversial, like Netflix and Bridgewater. And actually, like right now at the company, everybody is reading 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership, which is this incredible book by the, um, these people, the Conscious uh, Leadership Group. And it's just this really interesting cross-section of how do you bring awareness and consciousness and wholeness to actually building that really high-performing organization. Mm -hmm. And so we think that there's something special here that is elevating us from a really machine-oriented input-output, put on a mask when you come to work and your work avatar sort of culture to one that is a little more integrated and whole and aware and honest in a way that's unco really uncomfortable for a lot of people. And it's probably pretty magnetic in terms of it attracts some people and like repels most, yeah. <laughs> but we feel like it's a big avenue for our own personal growth in addition to how we're growing the company. There's an entire part two to this podcast that I, I want to do at some point on diving even deeper to all those uh, cultural uh, norms that you have. I think it's great. I, I know you got to jump. Thanks so much for, for spending the time. Anything you want to leave uh, the audience with in terms of where they can find you and, and find out more about Mindbloom? But yeah, Mindbloom is at mindbloom.co. I don't have social media, which I get away with as a mental health care entrepreneur, one of the fringe <laughs> benefits. And but yeah, we're really open. So if you want to uh, hit me up, I'm at dylan at mindbloom.co and would love to hear from you. Thanks so much, Dylan. Absolutely. Thanks, Trey. This was a blast.